Hello, and welcome to Book 3, Chapter 15 of You Should Be Reading. Now, it's been a long time since I've talked about this particular author, but I'd like to talk about a particular book of him. He's one of my favorite authors. Anyone who's been watching my show will know who that is. Ellie Modisett Jr., The Soprano Sorceress. This is the first book of the Spell Song Cycle, of which there are five books. Uh, that's right, Ellie Modisett Jr. just gives in to all of my cravings for the epic story. Um, this is like one of his smaller books. A lot of them tend to be like a lot thicker and and wordier and oh, glorious, glorious epic. I love them. But the Soprano Sorceress. This is one of his um, one of his more interesting books because in it he has a um, female uh, protagonist by the name of Anna Marshall who's from Ames, Iowa. And she ends up getting transported via magic to the world of Erd. That's E-R-D-E. -E. And on this other world, she ends up finding out that... See, see, you see, back home, she wasn't really all that important. She had a family, a couple of kids. I believe she was divorced from her husband. And she was a uh, music instructor and a small-time opera singer. You know, nothing really major. She wasn't super famous. She had some talent. But on the world of Erd, on the world of Erd, she, her musical ability basically means she is potentially a very powerful sorceress. Because on the world of Erd, music is magic. And that, that makes for some very interesting things. Um, she ends up getting involved in, where is it here? Do, 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 do. Hold on. Um, Defalk. D E F A L K. There's a place called Defalk in here. The wonderful maps that he has. Because pretty much for all of his fantasies, he's got wonderful maps, as you can see at the beginning of all his stuff. Um, but in the country of Defalk, he is. Uh, she, she finds herself embroiled in a war uh, that's going on. And being a sorceress who is completely not from this world, has no ties, has no money, and nothing. It's basically, I either serve these people who are, you know, kind of okay, they seem nice enough, or I starve to death. So she becomes a sorceress uh, in training for the, uh, in the war effort. And going on from there, the story tends to progress. <clears throat> now... Anna Marshall, uh, like almost all of Ellie Modisett Jr.'s female uh, characters, protagonists or supporting, tend to be very much their own women. Uh, there's some that aren't, naturally, because, you know, you've got to have a variety of characters. But he is an author that is very, very fond of writing strong female characters, uh, whether they are protagonists or not. And me personally, I am a huge fan of that. And but it's not just that he likes writing strong female characters. No, 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 no. He writes strong female characters that are realistic. They, they're not all super badass and tough all the time. They definitely can be, um, but they have vulnerabilities. They have insecurities. Uh, they have feelings, weaknesses, desires, wants. Like any woman, like any person would. He... He is very much an author that is very big on doing, uh, writing the realistic characters, even if it is in a fantastical uh, setting, whether it be fantasy with magic, whether it be science fiction with nanomachines and lasers and robots and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, they all tend to be very much realistic characters, and that, that I, I absolutely adore. And Anna Marshall is one of the better ones. Um, now, as a beginning book in a series, this is fantastic. Because not only, not only does it introduce us to Anna Marshall, it also introduces us to a young girl that Anna ends up befriending and kind of adopting uh, named Seka. Uh, 
S-E-C-C-A. And Seca is the, uh, she is the protagonist in the later books of the Spell Song Cycle. Because Anna's only in it for, I believe, uh, I believe it's for the first three. She is the main character in those in the first three books. Now, I could be mistaken. It might only be the first two. It's been a little while since I read it, but I believe it's the first three. And then Seca is the main character in the last two, or last three, if I am mistaken, uh, because she's been trained as a sorceress by Anna and has been trained in her method of dealing with things. And the entire thing uh, goes on from there. And all the characters that you first meet in here that are like young children, the young heir of um, Defalk that uh, Anna helps protect the kingdom for. Uh, he's the ruler in the last two books with Seca and not a very nice guy uh, once he grows up. <laughs> there is a lot of, I, I will warn you, there is a lot of um, male chauvinism written in these books. Now that's not to say that the author Ellie Modisett Jr. is uh, advocating chauvinistic behavior. This is absolutely not the case. But you can't you can't do a story with characters in a uh, medieval setting like this one where the men are used to ruling. It very much a, a patriarchy where the the men were pretty much in charge and aren't used to having women in power and then having a powerful woman step into that and not have that clash happen. And that's what he, that's what drives a lot of the story. Um, it's, it's what sparks a lot of conflict because you've got powerful women uh, standing up and proving that they can do a better job than the men. And the men that are all the old boys club are all, um, 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 um. We, we, we don't like her because she's a woman. And there's a lot of that behavior in the characters in this book, but not coming from the author. It is merely, he's merely using it as a tool for uh, storytelling and conflict to have it in this. Um, anybody who's read anything of Ellie Modest Jr.'s work knows that he is not, he is not the sort to discount a woman simply because she's a woman. A lot of his work is very, very much, um, very, very much, I hesitate to use the word uh, feminist in in viewpoint. I, I like to think he is more of an equalist in his viewpoint. He believes in uh, meritocracy, uh, the merit of the individual and whatnot. <clears throat> but regardless, uh, that's the kind of setting that you're, we're dealing with. She actually uses, um, uses some other stuff, um, rhyming couplets, and uh, what is it there? Um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, if you do happen to read it, um, when you get towards the end and she has her battle songs, uh, it's set to the tune of a, of a march here on Earth. So she, she's reusing songs from back home that she knows and the melodies to create spells in this other world. It, it's really kind of interesting and fun. Uh, I would highly recommend The Soprano Sorceress uh, for anybody who likes fantasy, who, for anybody who likes having somebody from our world suddenly thrust into a fantasy realm. This is very much like it. And another thing that's very interesting about this series, like all of his series, is he pays very close attention to the consequences of actions. Uh, simply because you do something, um, doesn't mean you're just going to get away with it. There's always a consequence to everything his character does, um, or says, for that matter, uh, even to the point of their magic. Uh, their magic, especially in a lot of his books, seems to be, it seems to come from nowhere. Uh, they seem to be able to channel it and do like amazing, uh, amazing feats of um, construction and destruction. With the, with the magic that they wield. However, despite that, 
they often end up passing out, uh, nearly dying. Uh, they tend to have to eat a lot more because all that power is being fueled by their own bodies. Uh, so there, it is an exhausting toll on any of these sorcerers or mages in any of his books. And it, it's one of the things I kind of like. I like that description, that that little thingy, I guess you could say, about magic. So yes, I would recommend The Soprano Sorceress. The entire spell song cycle, actually. I would recommend it. Anything by Ellie Modesty Jr. But mostly just this week, I recommend The Soprano Sorceress. So yeah, that's about it for this episode. If you like my videos, please give that like button a tap. Um, give that subscribe button a tap as well, if you haven't already. So you can be kept apprised of all new videos that I post up. Usually something in a week. I usually post something once a week. I try to. That's the goal, anyway. <laughs> and uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Uh, talk about Ellie Moses Jr., the Soprano Sorcerer's Spell Song Cycle, anything uh, by his, by him. Uh, please, get a discussion going. I like it. And remember, until next time, you should be reading The Soprano Sorceress by Ellie Modisett Jr. And I'll see you next time.